Okay, good evening, everyone. My name is Angela Achi, and I'm the moderator for today. I'm a lawyer by profession. I'm a trainee advocate. I'm at Kenya School of Law, and I'm one of the founders of Sharia Clinic. I'm joined by our co-founder, Rogers Mwangi. Uh, I'd like to talk about Sharia Clinic before I introduce the speaker of today. And Sharia Clinic is a virtual Kenyan-based legal aid firm whose primary objectives are two. One, we seek to offer pro bono services to the masses and to people who can't access justice or can't access a lawyer yet. Number two, we seek to enhance the participation of young lawyers through equipping them with practical skills. And we pride ourselves as one of the pioneers in the legal, in the legal of the legal education in the digital space. So I won't take much of your time. I would like to now introduce the presenter of today. So we have Wakili Claude Candem, Jean Claude Candem. So he's a lawyer by profession. He undertook his LLB at J. Quat Karen School of Law, where he graduated with a first class honors. He is a seasoned muter. He has muted before the ICJ, that is under the Kenya Model United Nations. He has also muted before the All Kenya. Uh, all Kenyan Moot Court competition that is under KU School of Law. He's also done internal moots in JQuad School of Law. And he has also trained mooters, prepared them for the mooting sessions and competitions. Uh, Cloud is also a trainee advocate, currently undertaking his advocate training program at Kenya School of Law. He's also a found, uh, the founder of Maximum Motivation Live, where he mentors teenagers, young adults. And right now he currently works at East Africa Center for Human Rights as the assistant project officer. So we bring good people, we bring qualified people, and we are glad to have him here today. He'll be talking about tested and intested succession, basically, about wheels, how are wheels, who draws wheels, who, can, who has the capacity to draw wheels, why should we draw wheels, and what happens if someone dies without a wheel. So those are the things that he's going to talk about, basically family law and succession. So I'm going to welcome Wakili Cloud Candem. You have 20 minutes from now, 20 to 30. So I'll stop you at around 8.40 so that we can have a discussion or a feedback from the live audience. Thank you. Wakili, over to you. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Angela, Angie. Um, thank you for, for the opportunity. Thank you for the invite. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here. And thank you for, for the introduction. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> The, ti the, title, the title of our topic then was um, uh, the issue of tested and intested succession demystifying. And, and so I want to, first of all, I know we have lawyers here. Uh, so caution that uh, we are not going to approach this from the very lawyerish perspective. It's not going to be full of sections and case law and the uh, and, and legal opinions, but we are we are doing what a clinic then should do, and I'll go by the objectives then that Angie has shared with us. And so I know there are also people here who are not lawyers, and so just generally understanding it as we should before we get to chambers and, and the courts and all that. So just a quick outline of some of the things I intend then that uh, we will be able to discuss. I also want to make it very engaging, but uh, just to outline some of the things that we will be able to discuss. Uh, the very basic, uh, what is a will? Yeah, what is a will? Uh, I really want to hear from people what the myths around wills are. I think that's an important aspect. Because I know particularly people uh, who are not lawyers, people who are, uh, we may refer to them as senior citizens. Many of them choose not to write wills because um, for reasons then that we'll be able to discuss here, I do not want to preempt the discussion. Uh, we'll also look at the characteristics of a will and uh, look at advantages of making a will. And then of course, then be able to be very clear on who is it uh, that can make a will and who cannot make a will. 
And what, and this is the only part where then we will make reference to the law, is what are the specific elements that maybe a court or an advocate who has been provided uh, with a will and all oh, this is a, is a last will and testament of Claude Candem. What will they look at in advising you whether Claude's will is valid or it is not valid? What will the courts look at and on what basis then will the courts establish that this is a valid will or in the alternative is an invalid will? Uh, having looked at that also, we will just uh, briefly then uh, have a, a, a brief uh, snippet into what then happens when uh, someone dies without a will. And uh, of course, then uh, bring the discussion to an end. There, this is just a drop in the ocean. There are so many things that relate to uh, testacy and intestacy. There are so many rules, there are so many procedures, but that is not what we are here to do. Uh, Tasema mambo ya mawakili tuachie mawakili kwa leo sisi si mawakili tunataka tu kupata ule ujumbe ambao tunafaa kuwa nao kwa hivyo um having said that uh, having said that then i think i will start uh, from defining a will it is safe to define a will because then we will need then to give it identity and it is from its identity then that we will be able to limit uh, or to determine the extent or the scope of our discussion. A will has been defined to mean a legal declaration by a person of his wishes or intentions regarding the disposition of his property after his death, duly made and executed as per the provisions of the Law of Succession Act. Having said that, I will just emphasize on two aspects. It is an expression of wishes. That is what a will is. A will is an expression of wishes. With regard to property. So these are my wishes with regard to my property upon my death, period. But then the manner of expression of those wishes then is subject Two is subject to the provisions of the law. And so when we talk about the law, then we ask ourselves, which law? And when we ask ourselves that question, then the answer is one. The law applicable is the law of succession act. The law of succession act. It is good to also note, just as a writer, now for those uh, lawyers who are here, this one is for the lawyers. And it is not necessary that the Law of Succession Act will apply in all scenarios. There are certain scenarios where the Law of Succession Act will not apply. For instance, uh, any uh, where, where, where the will maybe was made before the coming into force of the Law of Succession Act, that is 1981, then that will not apply. It is the system that applied then that will apply. When it comes to matters of dissolution of the property or the expression of wishes of a person who then is a Muslim, that falls outside the provisions of the Law of Succession Act. But back to our definition, because what we're interested in today, or what I am interested in today, is in the definition that we have given, that it is an expression of wishes with regard to property upon death. So, where a man is the one who is making this expression, he'll be referred to as a testator. Where a woman is the one who is making these expressions, she will be referred to as a testatrix. Yeah, but then if, then uh, that is good for the lawyers, you know, for those who then are not lawyers or lawyers in training or advocates in training, then that need not worry us. Uh, a man can write a will, a woman can write a will. But at this point, and with your permission, Angie, then having just said uh, what a will is, without even going to the advantages of a will or the characteristics of a will, I'd like to hear from the audience, maybe two or three people, some of the myths that we have or we know or we have had about, about wills. Yeah, because that then will inform us. And of course, this clinic then is aimed at uh, bringing clarity uh, or creating clarity as regards some of these uh, perceptions that we have about wills, which are not very true. Yeah. 
So I'd love to hear from the audience uh, myths, any myths that you have had or anything or any reason that you believe uh, is, is a good reason why someone should not write a will or should not be involved in the writing of a will. Just about a minute or two and then uh, I will proceed. Anyone? Maybe I can start. Uh, some people think that when you write a will, you it's like a premonition of death. You it's like you're about to die. So that's why people shun from shun away from writing wills. Thank you. Anyone else? You could unmute and just respond. Anyone else? <laughs> yes, Ken. Um, a good number of people think maybe wills are only for the wealthy or if you have a substantial amount of wealth. So that's why I think most people shy away from making wills. Uh, thank you. Uh, and, and I agree. And, and those two are the leading myths about wills. Number one, in the African setting, people are like, hey, that is just in death, you know. Uh, you just better be safe. You know, death is a very serious thing and uh, no one wants it upon themselves or anyone that they that they know or that they love. And so when someone writes a will, uh, people are like, this one is really pushing it, you know. You're really poking your fingers in the eyes of death by writing a will. And that's why then you realize that most, Africans or most people then shy away from writing a will because then you feel you're really testing death. The other reason is people believe our ah, wills are for people who have money. Yeah, it's for people who have a lot of property. And so there's people have something to fight about. So people are like, ah, me, you know, people, if I die today, people have nothing to fight about. Yeah, so there's no point of me writing a will. So the son has one house, they have one car. They really don't think there's any need uh, for them to, to, to write a will. They think, ah, let those who have money then, and also people then assume other myths then I'll say that a will is only valid if written by a lawyer. And so people will be like, ah, now by the time you go to lawyers and lawyers charge you an arm and a leg, yeah, and, and the lawyers in the room, I'm not trying to take uh, jobs away from you guys. I'm sure the pie is big enough for, me, for everyone. But uh, we all know then that uh, if our will is proper, properly written, it need not, there's no particular role specifically that an advocate really needs to play in the writing of a will. They play a critical role, yes, if you engage them, because then most likely your will will be valid and will not be subject to challenge on the basis of validity. Yeah, but uh, leaving them out, of course, has consequences in that you might make certain mistakes, which when brought to the attention of the court might invalidate your will. But if then from some of the information that we get here and you're able to write a will very well, you can write a will by yourself and it is valid. So another myth is that wills are only written by lawyers and, and that. So having then uh, discussed the myths, uh, we've settled on three and we have... Uh, uh, discuss them fairly, also in the interest of time. Uh, now, I think I want us then to look at, at, at um, the characteristics of a will very quickly, based on the definition that we have given. And for those then who might not have been here as we gave the definition, and of course, for purposes uh, or with, with due regard to the lawyers in the room or people who like reading and who would want to read, uh, you just need to look for the Law of Succession Act. If you just type that in, you'll find it. Alternatively, you could go to Electronic Kenya Law Resources, EKLR, and you able to see the list of the laws of Kenya and you look alphabetically. So you will look for law, L, letter L, law of succession, and you'll find the law of succession act there, the most recent version. And so when you read section three, that is where you find that definition, that it is an expression of wishes with regard to property upon death. And that is just a simplified version. But then now having defined it uh, that way, I'd want us then now uh, to carefully look at the characteristics, uh, the characteristics of a will, just so that as we move forward, then we have a very clear understanding. And generally then from that definition, we understand that number one, the wishes expressed in a will, the wishes expressed in a will are only intended to take effect upon death. That is very important. That the wishes in a will then 
are intended to take effect upon death. If you express something